Hi guys, so in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my own painting and coloring process in Autodesk Sketchbook. Basically, I'm going to be sharing some tips that you can incorporate in your own drawing process, which is going to really help you in not only making your process effortless, but also will help you in creating amazing artworks. So without any further ado, let's just jump right in. So the first tip, it's not even a tip, is obviously to make sure to clear out any sketch lines. When I say sketch lines, I mean the lines, the structure that you create before creating the original artwork is what I'm really asking you to clear out. My artwork actually ended up looking like the reference itself. I was actually creating realistic looking artworks all my life. So whenever I'm using reference, I always end up with a drawing which looks exactly like the reference itself. But if you want me to create an in-depth tutorial tutorial on how to create the sketch from reference, I would love to do that. The next step is on finding the color palette for your painting. So rather than going ahead and using the color schemes to create a color palette, I like to steal color palettes from other artists. The way you do it is you go on Pinterest, you look for other artists painting, not for the painting itself, but for the colors they've used. Now you're gonna pick any painting you really like, but for the colors, not for the painting, but for the colors. So this is a painting I picked up and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick colors from this painting and create a color palette you really have to focus on anything else but just on creating the palette this way you'll be able to see how those colors are working out for them in their painting and use the same exact color palette in your painting as well like if you look at it we're not really stealing anything we're just using the colors they've used in their painting which are working out for them now once you have the color palette decide what colors you're gonna use for which part of your painting you can move forward with the first step which is adding base colors to your painting you want to make sure you are adding color to each and every part of your painting before we move ahead with other processes you don't want to paint one part with a base color then shade it and then move on to another part do not do that the next step that I do and you want to make sure you're following this tip also is to start creating the first layer of shadows when I say first layer of shadow I only mean that you don't really have to spend a lot of time in creating shadows you just want to pick a color now how do you pick a color for a shadow you either pick it from the painting itself the painting you use to create a color palette or you just pick up your base color and just move towards the darker side of the color wheel either keeping the original saturation of the color or just increasing the saturation a little bit it's up to you but that's how you create uh, or pick up a color for your shadows now if you move towards the desaturation if you desaturate the shadow it's just gonna wash out your painting so I'd recommend either keeping the original saturation or just increasing it ever so slightly now when I say first layer of shadow I only mean that you only need to focus on creating a structure for shadows you do it either by using a reference or looking at a reference or you do it by keeping in mind the light source that you have imagined for your painting so wherever the light is not hitting there's gonna be a shadow the next step in my coloring process is usually me adding some facial details as in the eyelashes, the eyebrows, a little more shadows on the face, some blush. Now the reason why I always start with the face is because it just gives me an idea as to how dark the rest of the details of my painting are going to be. So I always make sure that I am creating eyelashes and eyebrows first as the very first thing when it comes to adding details to the painting now once I'm happy with the facial details what I do next is I focus on the line art of the overall painting meaning I clear out any part of the line art which is not required anymore I then fill in some gaps I usually always end up with some gaps which are not filled with color then I always make sure that I'm smoothing those lines out with a colorless brush again uh, make sure the opacity is really low because we don't want to smudge it all out you just want to really really lightly smoothen those lines out because um, in my painting they, they were looking really really harsh and they were not really going with the painting the next step is always to add finishing details in this step I start adding darker shadows over the base layer we have already created of shadows now again I have plenty videos on line art adding shadows how to add shadows how to shade and everything else 
how to use a colorless brush difference between a colorless brush and a smudge brush so so i will link all the videos down in the description box below go ahead and check it out but all here i'm doing is adding more shadows over the layer of those base shadows and then i go ahead with the process of me adding highlights again i have an in-depth tutorial on that as well but highlights are really really important please do not skip this step please make sure if you're adding shadows you're also adding highlights not just on the face but also on the rest of the body and also on any clothing piece you might have in your painting and in this process I also make sure that I'm joining the hairstyle with the face with the rest of the face just to make sure the hairstyle looks as if it belongs to the same person that I'm painting so for that all I do is I add darker shadows right around the hairline the next step is to create cast shadows now cast shadows are usually darker in nature so to make sure that I'm creating those correctly and that the color that I'm using for this purpose is aligned with my palette what I do I create a new layer I change the layer mode to multiply because it darkens the color a bit and then I just use the base color I've used on a specific um, area of the painting now how to know where to add this shadow again either you have a reference to help you out or you are keeping the light source in your mind while creating this shadow these shadows are usually harsh in nature as in do not soften it out make sure it is looking harsh but yeah that's what I do and I do it usually towards the end of my painting process now the next thing I do is once I'm happy with the painting itself I start creating the light source itself you don't really have to add a light source in your painting but I sometimes do like to add these elements but for this painting I am showing you here as I'm painting this light source but I actually ended up getting rid of these because I was not really feeling it so it's okay I guess so again how to create a glowing element I have an in-depth the tutorial on that as well you can go ahead and watch it it's just that you want to make sure that you are painting the light source or any glowing elements you might add in your painting before you actually start painting the light itself on the main subject as you all know the last step is always to add lighting on the painting this is essential like even if you do not have any light source even if you have not painted any light source in your painting it doesn't really matter you still need to yes you still need to add some kind of lighting on your painting because it really makes a huge difference it doesn't have to look realistic at all but any kind of lighting like even if you're not painting a realistic painting but just a regular textured illustration adding lighting to your painting it's just gonna make it look that much more beautiful now the color totally depends on what kind of light you want to project on your subject but I usually use bright yellow saturated color and I also make sure that I am changing the layer mode to glow it just makes the whole lighting look really really good and here I'm using soft air brush that's what I always use when I'm painting light so this is usually pretty much it that's all I do there is one additional step that I'm going to show you but before I do that I just want to let you guys know that if you approach your painting in such a manner in this exact same order your process is going to be really effortless also your painting is also gonna end up looking really good because what was happening with me before was that I would just start focusing on one specific part of the painting and then I would spend a long time on that very specific part of the painting and then would realize that oh it's not even looking good because I had spent a lot of time on it figuring out the, figuring out the shadows the lighting the highlights and everything else that it just never looked good and then I later on realized all right now I have to match the rest of the painting with this very specific um, part of the painting and that used to just make me anxious just thinking about okay now I have to do it all over again all over the painting makes me feel anxious and I know I've seen a lot of people doing the same thing where they would just focus on one specific part of the painting and then they would spend hours on that specific part and the painting does not turn out to be that good in the end right that was something I was doing so I changed my process to this one if you follow the same process or you uh, approach your painting in the same specific order your painting process is going to be effortless and your painting is also going to end up looking really good now in the end what you want to do is you want to pick a photo editor and I'm just using my iPads um, a photos app to edit this 
you don't you don't want to edit it too much what we're doing here is we're just increasing the saturation of it we're just playing around with the different editing tools here on this photo editing app i ended up increasing the saturation of the painting i increased the vibrancy of the painting as well i also increased the overall temperature of my painting as well basically pick a photo editor which has all these tools where you can play around with either the temperature of the painting or the picture saturation the contrast just play around with that a little that always enhances the painting okay you don't really have to do this step you can skip this step completely but it really just helps in enhancing your painting overall i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and you're taking something out of this video if you did give this video a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in my next video